This is a this is a drawing I got from PennDOT about three or four days ago. It primarily shows the seven lane bridge over the creek, and uh, the, they they have uh, the left turn stacking lane here going up to Chartier Street. But I'm sure that uh, PennDOT opposes that feature right now. So don't assume that. Uh, they're in favor of it. The point I wanted to bring to your attention is uh, going across the bridge, <clears throat> excuse me, that they have, uh, they're adding, I believe, one, one lane downstream and two lanes upstream. Going across the bridge, if you notice, there are two lanes. They're totally restricted, where no one can get into them. The first one is going to uh, North Bond 79, North Bond Rad. And the second one primarily is going to uh, Route 50 West, where they, for obvious reasons, they can head uh, <coughs> south on 79. But what I'm concerned about is <clears throat> that only leaves one road to relieve the traffic congestion from Bridgeville into South Head. And what I'm suggesting is that you do this to recommend this to them. That they take one of those, the lane going to uh, uh, <coughs> Route 50 West, that that be <coughs> allowed to be entered by cars, uh, that would be a dual purchase lane. And so that Bridgeville would have two lanes relieving their traffic congestion, and it, it requires nothing more than moving this uh, mountainable island back. I want to mention one other thing. When, <coughs> when I Three years ago, I offered a suggestion to PennDOT to make this bridge seven lanes uh, and to widen Chartier Street by one well, lane. I said six lanes three years ago. Or, or whatever it was. It was, it was six yeah, I was sitting there really like six feet wide or something. But, but, but what I'm pointing to, what point what the, the design that I gave primarily was to make, was to enhance traffic flow between the Bridgeville Business District and the South Head Business District, <clears throat> and vice versa. What happened was, at least at this point, they didn't agree, uh, PennDOT uh, seemed to not agree, uh, or had no interest in adding two more lanes to the South Head Business District for about 8,000 uh, uh, feet, which would have helped us and helped uh, 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 South Head, obviously. And it seemed, and, and the same, that's, that's why I'm so interested in the left turn stacking in the church history. But what happened, the way the pen dot uh, drawing shows now, all the emphasis is on getting the traffic on Chartier Street, left across the bridge, and right toward I-79. Primarily, I think 75% of those cars or vehicles come from uh, Bethel Park in Upper St. Clair. I'm certainly very interested in those people, but I'm more interested in the South Head Bridgeville Business District. And I think you, know, you guys ought to consider uh, making this modification to that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a major thing, but it would be, I think, very helpful to traffic flow in and out of the community. And one other thing, uh, you probably, I don't know if you received the letter from uh, Cheryl Seriani, she's the head of uh, PennDOT right now, sort of, yeah, the letter was written to me and she was telling me the reasons why uh, PennDOT didn't agree that the left turn stacking lane should be constructed. I'm going to leave a copy of this. This is a, a letter that I wrote back to her because I think uh, the data is not accurate that PennDOT has. And I very much would like, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give this to Lori. I guess okay. she'll give you copies I'll, to you. I'll, I'll send yeah, them and uh, I'd really like to see you uh, okay. try, try to get that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Council would like to recognize Lynn Reddy SBOs. Thank you. Thank you.
like a, it would be more of a proactive ban on opening any pet stores in Bridgeville that would sell pets. Um, I don't know if you're aware, uh, but there are over 100 municipalities across the country that actually have incorporated these bans, including the city of Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And I have, um, I only have one of those. I don't want to waste too much paper. So I have one of the copies of the bill for Pittsburgh and one for Philadelphia here. Um, and so basically, like I said, there are no pet stores right now in Brazil that I know of that sell puppies. Most puppies that are sold to pet stores come from puppy mills in the Midwest. I'm um, not sure how familiar you are with puppy mills. Um, there was an article in Rolling Stone magazine last year that was fantastic. I brought a copy of that. It lays it out in a lot of detail how these, uh, this industry works. It's a, it's a greedy industry that continues to breed puppies over and over again um, for profit. And the, there's no real care for the welfare of the animals. Been well documented. Um, I volunteer, I'm a volunteer district leader for the Humane Society of the United States for Congressional District 18. And um, the HSUS estimates that there are about 10,000 puppy mills in our country. And I have kept a lot of research, a lot of documents um, over the past couple of years, complaints. Um, Inspection reports from the USDA, which are hard to get now, <laughs> they weren't so hard to get last year. Um, but I have uh, collected and spoke to, spoken with a lot of people who have purchased these puppies that literally have been sick and many have died within a couple of days of purchasing them because they're very sick, they're inbred, um, they have a lot of health problems, and then the dogs just keep being read and read again. Um, this is the list of jurisdictions with retail pet sale bans. Um, like I said, in Pennsylvania right now, the only two cities are Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. And I apologize, my ink has started to run out. <laughs> so it's on a light. Sorry about that. Uh, but you can go on Best Friends Animal Society website and look up that list. You could look it up by date, um, and you could look it up by state as well. There are several communities in Ohio, and there's actually a state bill that uh, Representative Ortiz-Tai and I have been working on for the past with maybe year, where we're trying to get this statewide. California was the first state to do it. Um, we're hoping to be the second. Senator Guy Reschenthaler is also introducing a similar bill in the Senate. They're being circulated for co-sponsors right now. There's no actual bill number just yet. Um, the reason that California was able to pass its statewide bill is that there were so many local bans in place. So the more local uh, bans we can get, the better chance of the state bill pass. Um, but like I said, I've collected a lot of complaints and I've collected a lot of proof that shows that the puppies are in fact coming in from the Midwest. Um, this is just a real quick little snippet, but um, if I could give this to this was a woman named Heather. Um, who bought a puppy on September 9, 2016. The puppy has been sick ever since the second day we had him. We purchased him on a Friday, and by Saturday night, just like many others, he started coughing. We called the store that morning. Uh, they wanted him to bring us back. We brought him back. Um, this should have been a warning sign that the uh, sign is, oh, I'm sorry, that the store is selling sick animals. This goes on to talk about how the um, woman that bought it, bought the puppy spent literally thousands of dollars, and these puppies cost anywhere between 2000 and I've seen up to close to $5,000. So you can see it's a very, could be a profitable business, but not a humane one. There are humane stores in this area, Petland East Liberty and Petland Norwin both sell shelter and rescue dogs, which is fantastic. It also lower the euthanasia rate. Um, we, we put to sleep thousands of dogs every day in this country, and all of the shelters in our area, unfortunately, it's the same thing. There's just no space. It's not the shelter's fault. It's a community problem. We just, we need it. This would help get it. This would help reduce those numbers, too. So, um, I, like I said, last thing, the last page of that packet are uh, copies of transport certificates that you can see from Missouri, I believe. But I have 
pages and pages and pages of books. I just wanted to show you. That shows exactly where they came from, how old they are. They're only eight, eight to ten weeks old when they're taken from this mill, put on a truck, and shipped what is it? I think it's about a thousand miles from here to Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska. Those are like the big states. So that is what I'm um, asking of you to please consider a van. Like I said, it wouldn't affect any uh, business in here in Bridgeville right now at all. It would just be a, like a preventative measure. So any questions? I have a ton of stuff. Like I said, I've collected. I'm willing to share whatever you want to see. Whatever I can email you or send you. Um, I don't, and this yes. isn't the first time. You know, I know we've talked and um, we mentioned <coughs> the glory and Tom here. I mean, we're looking at the legality of it uh, to see what it would take to you know, the nuts and bolts of the ordinance. Like, as you said, we're trying to do it statewide. Mm -hmm. and I think there's an issue statewide. We're trying to figure out where you know takeoffs are. Is that what yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. If you like, yeah, and, and we have, and from the first times that you've submitted this stuff to Lori, we've looked at it and I've taken a look at it, certainly without disagreeing at all with, with the merits of it. There are some concerns that we had, especially when we don't have one in Bridgeville. And I know you noted other states around the country, in Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, and I kind of look at the legal. There's a, a potential legality question for us. Which is, um, and there has been actually litigation around the country in places where they have, as you can imagine, tried to enact these. Uh, in Pennsylvania, particularly the way our straight state government hierarchy is structured, with the exception of places like Pittsburgh and Philly that have what's called home home, they want power to act kind of state like. We're actually, uh, there's a question about whether we have the authority under state law to regulate this or whether it's more appropriate under our Pennsylvania constitutional structure, something that has to be done at a state level. Um, so there, there's a concern with that where we don't have one on the table here or that issue. Um, and we would invite a lawsuit if actually somebody did file a permit and we denied one. And since we don't have one and since there is legislation brewing on the, on the Commonwealth, my initial recommendation was not to expend all the resources at this time. But that's certainly a legal system. I would say, you know, if there's a way we could do it, let's pursue it. Pursue our options. It's, 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 it makes sense, obviously. Yeah, certainly not. They are susceptible to those sorts of challenges. Yeah. Tom, is it due to discrimination of allowing a business in, or would no? There's a question under Pennsylvania state law as to what sorts of things the local government are allowed to regulate in terms of business, because a lot of things are regulated on the state or can be preempted by state law. If it's specifically regulated, or generally, there's an argument to be made that it's not within the zone of powers that we were given to regulate on a local, local governmental level. We can enact such an ordinance, there is a, there's a, there is a risk, and it has happened around the country, if somebody would to file one to challenge it, you would be in litigation about it. Let's take a look at, uh, I think that's a good idea. Let's see what we can do. Sure. It's, it's, what, definitely what's worth, a, definitely worth taking a look. What's the time frame, Jason, I'm looking to submit submit something through the state or is it just he has to get more buy-in? I believe it's being introduced before Humane Lobby Day in Harrisburg, which is April 16th. So sometime in the next few weeks. And if it goes statewide, it's basically blank and Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. They don't uh, sell puppies. I, no, sell like pet land, they don't sell puppies, they sell goldfish. Oh, for, uh, pet supplies. Yeah. Plus, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they don't sell. There's no. Right. There, there's no pet store in Bridgeville right now. There's all the puppies. And that's called. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's pet supplies. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I don't think it would cost any money. No, no, we're not worried about that. No, we're not like talking that. about it. Because and it's we're not business. trying to affect businesses like right. not, so the businesses can still open. <clears throat> It's just a matter of where they get. The, the money risk wouldn't be in enacting the ordinance. Mm -hmm. The money risk would be in like, if, if, if it were challenged and there was legal fees associated with it. And you said that, that somebody. <laughs> there have been lawsuits in other states around the country I challenging know. local ordinances which have attempted to prove these types of ordinances that have attempted. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, maybe I can. We'll look at it. We'll, we'll look at it. Okay. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Thanks for considering. Thank you very much. Uh, much
I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> How you going? Pretty good. Two thirty-three. Um, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Copeland. A nice article in the newspaper. Um, and I um, congratulate you. Congratulate you and uh, wish you the best of luck. Um, Lori, you have a house down on uh, Chester. Two thirty-six, I believe. Greenhouse next to Rich Lawrence's auto. Garbage has been on that porch for like a year. Next to Rich Lawrence's auto? Yeah. Lawrence's auto? Okay. And uh, while, you're, while you're here, uh, doing the puppy mills, I'm going to do some moxie class. Hey, what's, um, I hear that you're taxing people with vacant properties. What's, um, what's going on with that? It's, it's, it's inactive already, right? It's a uh, different tax structure. Basically, different it's, tax structure for different people in the community. It's your land and then your, your building. So each piece of property has a uh, tax separate tax structure. And it was never like that before? No, so it was all combined. Um, what's the reason behind that? To uh, spur development. Spur development. So people are. Uh, how, about, how about if you own something in a floodplain? Are you still liable for that property, even though you can't own the floodplain? If you had property such as you described, presumably it would be valueless or have a very little value. But you'd still be paying more, right? Millage wise, but not more than another comparable property elsewhere. If you have a property that has any challenge, that goes into its base value. What they've done here is they just have a different millage rate for the property versus the structure on the property. Regardless of whether it, wherever it's located, just by way of example. Now, were there other options? Yeah, we're going to keep it the same as we always have, and just just increase millage right across the board. Do you have any, do you have paperwork on that board? I just have to add the ordinance. See? I can give okay. you a copy of the ordinance. Okay. okay. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that because I own a couple of vacant properties, and it's going to cost me a little more money, and um, I'm a little upset about that. Um, on Station Street, I see that they're putting the, uh, the new meters up. <clears throat> there was never a metered parking in front of the church, Methodist Church. Um, I see there's going to be parking there, the metered parking there now. Well, if there was never metered parking there, then there's the parking authority should come. They should have came to you. <coughs> to adding metered parking on a street that was unmetered. I, 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 I know they lined it, mm -hmm. but now somebody was telling me that it's metered. And I was just wondering. We have a listing. I, I In our codification book, yeah. I have a listing of all the streets and which ones should be metered and shouldn't be metered. So if they're putting meter, if, if they're marking them, to put the for the kiosks mm -hmm. on a street that isn't listed in our codification book, then that isn't enforceable. So if that's happening um, on you said station. This is what I this I don't know firsthand, but this is what I was told. Okay. Because the gentleman that bought the house uh, at Chess and Station was okay. a little upset because he he was told that that was going to be metered on you know opposite of him. Which is in front of the uh, Methodist Church, and, uh, and which it, it wasn't, it metered, wasn't before. metered before. And if it isn't metered, then and there's lines, and there should be signage saying that it's not metered. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So people weren't confused. confused. Right. Right. They have to come and, and get <coughs> approval from the borough council to add additional. And they routinely yeah. do. So if they yes. have, and it may have been an administrative break. Mm -hmm. Because I was actually looking at one of the recent we did to see if it was the one you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We did one. That's, that's, they did one on Hickman Street, for example. Last yeah, year. for two spaces. Yeah, that's thrown a lot. That's thrown a lot of people down on our end. Right. I mean, I'll you know, check. It's not as bad now because of the school. But, right. You know, I get a lot of those people going to the smocks and play. Yeah. Yeah. I'll call them tomorrow and check with them and make sure it's okay. not happening. Thank you. Thanks, 
I just want to take the opportunity to, to, to make a general note suggestion to folks with regard to code enforcement matters. Um, certainly, if you feel like the administration or council is, is not responding to things, nobody's saying don't come to a public meeting, but would ask if you might first exhaust attempts to call Lori in the administration office with code complaints. There is a, an issue under code enforcement of sensitivity, even if somebody's violating or alleged <coughs> violating something, of sensitivity to the, the, the pr person's privacy if you have a chance. There's actually a structure that gives us a chance to allow folks to work things out privately before it becomes air and dirty laundry. So would ask just as a, a dignity matter and a protocol matter, if folks could call the manager's office give them an opportunity to try to address those matters before we possibly kind of out people. I'm sorry, there was one more thing. Okay. Um, do you have an ordinance on dogs uh, defecating, picking it up, mm -hmm. people picking up their dogs? I don't know if we're barking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, far as, as far as people walking dogs, they're, right. they're required to pick it up immediately. If, mm -hmm. if it's within their yard area, it has to be picked up within 24 hours. How about, so, how about if I'm walking? A dog down the street and it poops on the sidewalk and you just keep going and the poop's laying there. Mm -hmm. Is there an ordinance for that? Yeah. And if someone tells me, can tell me who they are, yeah. because I've had that happen uh, you before. Sent, you sent a letter before. It was a, 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 a German Shepherd. Yes. yes. Is he doing the same thing? Um, yeah. It's, it's not, not, not a lot. Okay. I'll send him another letter. Thank you. All right, uh, on to our regular meeting. Um, minutes, motion of the borough council regarding the minutes of February 12th, 2018 regular meeting as submitted. So moved. Who's got Arducci? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2018-02. Motion of the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2018-02, a resolution, a resolution of the Borough of Bridgeville confirming the application to the PA Small Water and Sewer Program for the grant in the amount of $180,293.28 from the Commonwealth Financing Authority to be used for the 2018 full-length manhole-to-manhole line project. Uh, Total project cost is $212,109.74 with the borough responsible for 15% or $31,816.46. So we've got Ricci. Second. And Regent Hot, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. 2018 Sanitary Sewer Excavation and Repair Project. These were advertised and publicly opened on Thursday, March 8, 2018 at 10 a.m. in the Council Chambers for the 2018 Sanitary Sewer Excavation and Repair Project with the following bid results. Uh, the end of construction, 10% uh, bid bond uh, for a bid of $190,840. So like construction, bid bond 10%, amount of $224,650. State pipe services, bid bond 10%, the amount of $269,940, the amount of $269,940, and Osiris Enterprises, bid bond 10%, the amount of $360,430. Uh, motion to the Council regarding the award to the bid to the lowest responsible bidder in the end of construction, incorporated in the amount of $190,840. Contingent upon review of all required documentation by engineer sites. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chally? Second. And Joe Buckwell, all those in favor? Aye. All those in favor? Motion carries. 2018 uh, Baldwin Street Backwater Valve Project. Uh, these were advertised and publicly opened on Thursday, March 8, 2018, at 10 a.m. in the Council Chambers for the Baldwin. Street Backwater Valve Project with the following bid results. The Cyrus Enterprises, 10% bid bond, $76,800. Full Light Construction, bid bond of 10%, $84,700. And uh, Bayer Pipe Bursting LLC, 10% uh, bid bond, 
for $112,190. Uh, motion of the Department of Commerce regarding the award of the bid to the lowest responsible bidder, Osiris Enterprises, in the amount of $67,800, contingent upon review of all required documentation by Engineer Sykes. That's so moved. Nina Petricelli. Second. And second by Bruce Galarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, bill list. Motion of the Borough of regarding the March 2018 bill list. I'll move. Uh, Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce Galarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Payroll. Hey, Motion of the Borough of will approve the payroll of March 16, 23rd, 30, and April 6, 2018. <coughs> so moved. Uh, Bruce Calarucci. Second. Andrew Cosmo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due the February 2018 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Joe Rucci. Second. Uh, um, that's Bruce. Second. Bruce. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the January 2018 financial report. I'll move. Joe Rucci. Second. And Bruce Calarucci. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And motion to accept the February 2018 police report. So moved. Who's that, Bill? Yeah. Bill Anderson and, and BJ Spot. All those opposed? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. And a motion to accept the February 2018 zoning report. So moved. Second. Bill Anderson and Joe Plasmo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, administration. No report, sir. All right. Uh, finance, Joe? I really don't have anything. By the way, that's a wonderful report there. There you go. I like that report. Thanks very well. <laughs> parks and Recreation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> real quick, uh, the park's scheduled to open on April 1st, weather permitting. Usually we get the first part of the year. That's part of John down the park because they don't want to turn the water on because it might freeze up and then we'd have a mess. So. And uh, I was talking with a couple of public works people today, and they said Charters Park looks pretty good. They haven't cleaned up the uh, restrooms yet, but uh, we're hoping to do that before April first. So are they able to drive down? Is that uh, driveway okay? That's what the uh, was uh, talking okay. about. That's good. So um, they actually they, are uh, got some reclaim um, from rain. Right because I know normally at the end of the March they BAA tries to have some type of cleanup. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's a, it it would be okay for them to come down or you know to schedule that. Okay. It, it's okay to do that. Should they? Uh, when do you want them to call and ask you to call Germany or wherever? You have to um, I normally do it. Um, I try to wait until probably the third week of March. It, they usually do it that week. Um, to, and then it takes the guys a few days to, yeah. you know, because they pull the pump out and everything. So, okay. um, so by the end of the month, they well, wash. A couple of new people, so I'm trying to get them all. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't have. I'll just, I'll just do it. They can check with me and see if it's fine. Thank you. Okay, and uh, first warning: the uh, deadline for the next newsletter is April 9th, which is the next council meeting. But, uh, Everybody heads up on that, and that's all I have. Thanks, Joe. I'm sorry. I have a Joe, do you have any progress on the uh... comprehensive plan for the park? No, we haven't done anything. Okay. We'll, we'll get together. What's the time frame on something like that? Just to understand the progression. I think what we need, we need to sit down and lay out all the all the issues, and then we can put together a time frame. Is it a matter of scheduling something then? Yeah, we need to schedule something. Okay. All right, Joe, just to as a heads up, the VA would like to be involved in that, for obvious reasons. All right. Uh, public Works. Mike. Go ahead. Hey, Hold on. Yeah, it's okay. If I can make a comment before you know. I did want to pass the vento with the crest of the hill, it's a big hill down around. 
Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you to the Public Works Department. They did a wonderful job. It's wonderful. It was just great. And we all should be grateful. Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> Nina, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, the, uh, the snow the removal goal was added just now, as we're speaking, $5,809.20. The, what we have in overtime, it's four thousand six hundred and four dollars and sixty-four cents. That's from February. That's February, obviously. Yes. February saw twenty-nine thousand seven hundred thirty and twenty cents. For the bad weather we have, I call this pretty darn all good. Yeah. Let's hope that. We're done. <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, you it's know, it's, it's no bad. I see, I see worse than this. Yeah. <laughs> this is no bad. We're looking $1,204. You know, it's not a big deal to, to please only uh, Mrs. Falcourt, but so many of us, which is definitely a very good job to with the front public board, with no question. And as far as the, the rest of public work, that's a regular routine, you know, fix the catch basin, fix the sinks at the Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, sinkhole walls, clean parks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Snow removal, of course, it's already in, in my first uh, comment. Uh, if I may, and, and that's all I have for public work, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. If I may, it's not in, if I may, because it's not in, in this. I can wait till new uh, to at the end. And that's not a formal motion. I just to remind some to this council. Some of the good thing, maybe they were good when I was in council. The pre some procedures. Let me pick up just one, okay? There, there isn't that many, but one in particular that I really would like to be continued. That's not in a formal motion, please. Remember that. I even spoke to Lori about it. I remember that every meeting after the election, November, that the PAC it was distributed to all the new members who were coming in. Of course, now, who came in, we don't know, even though we're here, okay? We all distribute the PAC. To everybody, the new member, mm -hmm. the one who was sitting on, do I think perhaps, perhaps Mrs. Bott, okay? I mean, it would be nice for her to have the pack, to be incorporated with the conversation, even though it's one month, but still, the new council people. Mm -hmm. it, that's right here, that's here. He, he, that's not a formal motion. I would like that this will, will come back this way. Not necessarily, but it is a good uh, good way to do it. There is no, yeah, it is. There is no legal thing you have to do that. If there's it's, no privileged it's, information in it, they can certainly be included in the back. It could, it, 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 very simple. Yeah. Very simple. It's not, it's yeah. not, sort of, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? There is, it, it could be three brand new ones that never have been in country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, we all. Pretty, yeah, pretty much messed with that. I don't remember. I don't remember. I got him to do it. Well, it's been quite a while. Yeah. It's been quite a while. I think I would like to. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. No problem. Sorry to spoke out of turn. Thank you. No problem. It's uh, all right. Public safety. Bill? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, public safety committee has met to with the police negotiating team to initiate negotiations for negotiations for a new contract. Uh, we'll continue that process as we move forward. The um, only other thing I have is really to congratulate the chief again on uh, keeping his batting average at 100% and uh, solving crimes through social media. Um, you know, that I, if I could just say one thing, the public is a very powerful tool, and, and the chief and the police department have leveraged the Bridgeville public brilliantly to help solve crimes, and, and uh, I commend you again for that. So, thank you. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Madam Mayor. President, uh, we've received an invitation from Solid Rock Revival Church on Dewey Avenue for March 24th. They're having a formal dedication of the building. 
and uh, they've asked me to speak, but at that time I'll also be presenting a proclamation from, from the borough. What's the date of that? March 24th at 5.30 p.m. And our firemen are be, to be commended for having to leave their fish fry to go and assist the Carnegie Department at that fire that happened at PJ's. That was something for them to have to do. Oh, excuse me. I've got PJ's on the mind because she's celebrating her 40th anniversary. We were just there the other, other night, but her official celebration will be in November. And the Chief has also allowed me to share this letter with you from the United States Secret Service, February 6, 2018. Chief Chad King, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the invaluable assistance and support for Secret Service protective operations provided by your personnel for the recent visit of Vice President Mike Pence. The efficiency of your department proved to be invaluable in ensuring the safety of both the protectees and other attendees at the events. Your officers' professionalism was evident throughout the visit at which multiple jurisdictions need to be covered. Their consistent attention to detail and hard work ensured that it was a safe and enjoyable event. It's an honor to work with the men and women of your department who provide and maintain a high level of security and safety for our leaders. The help and support that the Bridgeville Police Department provides to the security operations of the Secret Service is vital to their success. On behalf of the men and women of the Pittsburgh Field Office, please accept and pass along our deepest appreciation. We look forward to working with you again in the future. Sincerely, Timothy P. Burke, Special Agent in Charge of the Pittsburgh Field Office. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. After that introduction, <laughs> I have a few things. Um, first off, uh, Mr. Cheeto, just to address some concerns with the Suboxone clinics you mentioned, I do have some good news. We are down from seven clinics, we're now down to three. So, for what that's worth, unless another one snuck in somewhere, but I only know, I only know of three at this point. Um, the food drive, which we mentioned last month, was supposed to culminate on the 12th. We actually backed it up three more days to the 15th. We will be picking up the boxes on the 15th, um, and all the departments involved will be taking the items down to Bethany's Church for the um, food bank. Uh, it should be noted, I've already had to go to a few locations, the library, and Precious Paws, and I literally filled up my entire pickup truck with food once already took it to a storage unit in Collier Township that we're utilizing. So it looks like it's going to be pretty good success. Um, there will also be a pizza party at the school on the 14th, which each jurisdiction had local pizza shops. And we had big, big guys pizza donate 12 pizzas for the pizza party for the kids at school as each classroom and each grade level that, that donated the most gets to have a pizza party. So it'll be done on the 14th. We have our drug take back box. We received it about a week or two ago. Um, hopefully we, we are looking to get it installed maybe by Friday. We do have to have the road crew bolt it to the floor. That's one of the rules regarding having a box like that. It has to be in a common accessible area to the public, which will be in our lobby, and it has to be bolted to the floor. Um, there is an instruction paper attached to the box that lists what can be deposited. Um, obviously you can't put needles or aerosols or liquids in it strictly for pills. Also, they don't want um, uh, anybody other than individuals bringing their medication down because what they've found through these programs, some businesses will try to take advantage of this and bring mass quantities in to dispose of. But some of the other rules are when, when an individual comes in to deposit their medication, we're not allowed to ask them who they are or what they're putting in there. We just hope that they follow the rules. So as the container inside fills up, I'll weigh it, put it in a garbage bag, store it in the evidence room, and every quarter, I think it is, the Army Corps of Engineers or, or the National Guard, I think it's the National Guard, um, has a remote location which we take the items to to have them disposed of properly. But we're hoping to have that in by Thursday or Friday of this week. Chad? Yes? Do they want you to leave the pills in the bottle or dump them in all together in a plastic 
bag? Or? They didn't really say, but when you put them in the drop box, it goes into a Tupperware bin. I would say just leave them in the bottle. That way you don't have to touch them or anything. Okay. Because, you know, it's hard to tell with what's out there nowadays how potent it can be. Um, we had the flu hit us hard last month. Ten out of the 12 officers came down with it. I was one of the two that avoided it somehow. But I think we lost a, close to a total of 25 shifts due to uh, guys coming down with the flu. And not only that, but about a third of the department relapsed with an upper respiratory infection after recovering from the flu. So something in 19 years, I've never seen it hit like this, but it was bad. When it hit, it hit hard and it was bad. I think we're finally pulled through that. Um, earlier, as mentioned, I can expand a little bit more on the, the package theft that we had on February 26th. A lady had a package delivered on Main Street and she actually had a video camera facing her porch where she received deliveries. And it wasn't the greatest video if anybody saw it on our Facebook page, but I put a, the video out with some still shots and it took till about March 9th before we got a solid, credible tip. I actually had a guy flag me down last Thursday late in the shift on Washington Avenue saying, hey, you know, he was asking if we had solved it yet. And I uh, told him no. I said we had a few leads that didn't pan out. And he said, well, you know, that kid had a skateboard. He said, I know there's a house on Power Hill Road where I've seen a kid walk to with a skateboard. He goes, I don't know if that's good info, but I've seen a kid on a skateboard. So it didn't seem like much information, but in proximity to Main Street and Cook School Road, where it intersects with Bower Hill, wasn't that far away. It just so happens this house, within the past year, had converted into an apartment building. Now, unfortunately, I had been in that same house last April for a drug overdose death. It has since converted to an apartment, so we looked up our landlord-tenant listings, and sure enough, that gave us a name of the tenant of the upper apartment. So. I went there on Friday to make contact, and lo and behold, when I walked up on the back porch, the box that he had taken was sitting on his back porch with the lady's shipping address on it. We call that a clue. <laughs> so, Apparently, it's not Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll get to that. So, um, came back, got some guys together, we got a search warrant, we went back to the apartment later that morning and sure enough the item that he took was a 15 pound weighted blanket which is normally used for kids to help them sleep better at night kids that have trouble sleeping anxiety and whatnot so we were able to seize the blanket and of course drugs and paraphernalia and uh, the gentleman had given himself a haircut prior to us coming back the second time out on his porch but um, i had asked him and i showed him the video i said you know do you know who that is and he was just staring like you know, then he, he fessed up later on, but he, he didn't see the Facebook because he didn't have access to Wi-Fi, so he didn't see himself until that day. But no matter the information, sometimes the smallest tidbits, you know, hey, I saw a kid on a skateboard go to this house, you know, it panned out for us, you know? So it, uh, it worked once again. That's all I have. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Mr. Solicitor. Yeah, my report, uh, we did, per the safety committee's uh, request, uh, draft the ordinance amendments for Mill Street Park, and it does really consideration. Uh, we, we looked up with the pet ordinance, as you requested, and we did some material back on that. I did include in your report the uh, quiet zone report that we had commissioned on Murray Avenue. It does, as we anticipated, note that it's not, uh, does not meet the criteria, but at least it explains why. And then finally, I think you're here to hear Joe and, um, and Lori and I uh, increasingly, uh, as things are going to start uh, happening on a more frequent basis with regard to the consent decree, the, uh, the uh, sewer consent decree over the next month. So I have a meeting on Monday with the uh, solicitors groups, managers have been in ongoing meetings here. I've got parts of the next round. So I'm sure we're going to get a much from each other. Moving forward. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, engineer sites, I think it's pertinent. Uh, we covered most of the items in the engineer's report. Uh, for, to note, uh, we, Lori and I attended a meeting at Alpha Center about a week and a half ago to, to go over uh, some uh, repairs that are needed on the interceptor that goes to C53 and C5310 and C54. Uh, those are the joint things. I think 
one of the things that we've already started to do is uh, videotaping the section of the interceptor down along uh, Commercial Boulevard. We started doing that after the uh, January 12th uh, storm event to make sure there was capacity in the line so that to help out with the uh, backflow preventers. Um, the other thing uh, that we have out there is the uh, we have the uh, Route 50 uh, corridor meeting on the 29th of uh, March that uh, we depend on. So March 29th, March 29th, yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Chief's not here. Uh, Southbridge, Dan Miller. Nothing to report. Mary Weiss, Bridgeville Historical Society. I'm here. Floor is yours. <coughs> you all know who I am, and you know where I live, and you know where I'm coming from with this <laughs> Maybe. I'm starting out with the borough because of what happened to me this week. I'm going up Station Street Hill, Chief Bill. I'm in the left lane to make the left turn onto Washington Avenue. The car coming from station the other way got through fine. I'm pulling up. A good thing it was going up and I could put my foot on the brake. The car in that lane cut right in front of me and went left and went down Washington Avenue. And I sat there for about a minute saying, no policeman, darn it. But he came right from that right-hand lane, right in front of me. So you're saying he you made a left-hand turn in the right-hand Left, right -hand he lane. came from the right lane to make a left turn. Mm -hmm. So maybe they need a bigger sign, or maybe they need to learn how to read. <laughs> but uh, uh, the one gentleman brought up about the steps um, from Conwood <coughs> Place down to Laurel. Of course, we had that privilege when we were young. And we used it quite a bit. Uh, when the uh, Lithuanians took over the Methodist Church, which became St. Anthony's, uh, the women used to come up their steps 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon, went over to the church walking. Of course, during the Depression, they did that. And um, they used that walkway, that stairway, all the time. We had people in Friday from Montana, grew up here in Bridgeville, and were absolutely astonished that we had not replaced it. So I'm putting it back in your hands because you've already heard from us about it anyway. Uh, the man and I got into a talk about it, said we'd even give $25 each if we could get some companies to help do it, or, you know, help, help. Anyway. Uh, the other thing that I was going to ask about tonight, um, I haven't made my appointment yet with Lori. I'm on a very, very personal budget this year at my home. And that includes a car, and that includes a lot of work, like with the holly trees that have to be cut back, um, and on and on. There's, and I want to know how to figure my borough tax under the new system that no one knows about. I can help you do that. So, but yeah, that's, I want to make an appointment with you to get that done. Um, the other thing on the way of Burroughs report, um, please keep the pressure, if you can, nag PennDOT about some kind of highway system <coughs> from Upper St. Clair across, rather than through here, but across that way. Um, one other thing, I heard that the women's club is going to be torn down. That's next to the church that was sold. That was built in 1918, 1919, after World War I, by the women of this community. And I can remember when they had parties, they had picnics, they had reunions. They had programs that gave back then they couldn't even vote. Women didn't get the vote in 1921. So they had some place to go and something to do other than stay home and clean the house and take care of the kids and all that. 
Georgeville had a very bad reputation for a while of tearing it down or burning it down. And I hate to see something like the women's club go down. Besides that, I went to kindergarten now. There was no kindergarten in the public school system at that time. On the other side of the fence, um, I want you to be aware that we are pursuing a lot of new and more hopefully interesting to the public. And we did get good coverage this time from South Hills Living. And Katie Green, the editor, is going to get my sincere thanks. Uh, we'll be coming up with some new ideas and uh, of trying to get a lot more people coming to Bridgeville, a lot more people coming to see us. We're starting to work with the Bridgeville Public Library together to see if we can get some of this done. Um, at the end of this month, the last Tuesday of March, this booklet that I showed everybody, not everybody, but it's here to, for you to look at. Um, this is West, no it isn't West Newton, it's, I'm sorry, Cement City in Denora. And it is, they are cement houses, and they've been there for a hundred years. And I had cousins that lived there, and we used to go there all the time to visit them. So I'm very familiar with that area. If you ever get a chance, do the tour. If you get a chance to come down to the History Center, no, sorry, the Fireball that night. Uh, he's a tremendous speaker. He uses tremendous photographs. Uh, and the, uh, as you were right a couple meetings ago, Thomas Edison played a big role in this. Um, let's see, I only have a couple more things real quick, like um, we are, of course, helping. We're almost filled to the top now, Chief. And I hope we finish getting it. Will we? That's a great idea. We thank you. We're glad to help. Um, this is the time of the year when we do the annual art contest for third and fourth graders. We have yet to get any other school involved except South Fayette. And uh, so the end, middle end of April, you can see their paintings and all the businesses in Bridgeville that we can get to. Uh, we're going to be holding a two, make sure this is right, two-day bake sale, the Thursday and Friday, right before Mother's Day. Uh, I'm sorry to do <coughs> the tickets to the Penguin game. Uh, we went over the top, we sold all the tickets. It's, Bridgeville people have been exceedingly helpful. Um, and we want to thank our volunteer fire department. I don't know if uh, everyone knows, the women's auxiliary that the other day brought us two huge photograph albums, the history of the Virgil Volunteer Fire Department. And uh, they have some great photographs, so stop in. And I ran out of things to tell you except what we're starting to move fast forward, and we want you all to take part. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I make a small comment uh, to Mary? Yep. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you mentioned the Mary, you mentioned the, the clubhouse. Now, if there really would be history, I think it'd take much longer than whenever they was built. The border could make, but I don't see too many historical things in Bridgeville, maybe up to Nuba Bridgeville. The borough, the council could make a some kind of uh, uh, restriction on that, like Italy for that. She couldn't even cut three if the tree is 150 year old. You know allowed, you can build the run, but you don't have that's an example. So I don't think for council to make an ordinance on historical whatever it may be, that's kind of early. I have to be much, much later than it has to be hundreds of years or something like that. Well, this is in Italy where things are 
thousands of years old. Yeah, that is right. So, I mean, that was when I'm talking. So, so actually, somebody feels bad that they something young. It's baby then. In compare, yeah, yeah, this was relative to you answered very well with the gym. But it's sure we feel better when we see something like that here and Absolutely. Yeah, but party, there you go. I, I bought Mr. Davis next to me. Mr. Davis was in the pedestrian store. Years and years and years. We could call that historical, but it's not. But the aim was short, but I need the parking. So, and there is many other things on, on the land. They're later on in the years. I'll make some my comment. But well, thank you, Mr. Chim, no to allow me to. <coughs> I just want to say, since Chief Chilio is not here on behalf of the fire department, to remind everyone of the fish fry this Friday from 4 to 7, dine in or take out. Um, I think the mayor's man on the phone should take out again. <laughs> I'm going to talk to her. But yeah, it's doing really well, and we really appreciate all of this. really fast this year. Like, really fast. Everybody I talked to was like, yeah, before I even sit down, Debbie's chasing me with my food. <laughs> hey, we try. <laughs> One of my volunteers just, uh, oh, volunteers, she heads up the goodies department for women and men. But anyway, tomorrow night at the, at the, the railroad station, we're going to do, I think it's 1948 and 49, but there was a football team in that two year period that 10 or 12 or 14 of those young men got scholarships because of that uh, football. So tomorrow night at 7 at the railroad station. The railroad? The rail yard? Yeah. No, or the no, railroad? The railroad. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. 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 Oh, you see, we've, we've been getting high school kids from Chargers Houston, yeah. and we want to try to get South Fayette, Chargers Valley, and to come too. Absolutely. Thank good. you. Uh, Ritual Planning Commission, who wants this one? Are you or? Well, it's either you, but the other one's sweet, it's fine. Uh, I, I, I could shoot from the hill, would you? I sure will. Um, Last two meetings, we've uh, started reviewing um, the Bridgeville uh, Comprehensive Plan, kind of going back over that. Documents, I don't know, 10 years old, 10 plus years old. For, the, for, the, for us new guys, it was kind of interesting to kind of look at it and start talking about some of the things. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things on there um, that you know, have been completed over the last 10, 13 years. There's still some stuff out there that, you know, Maybe the planning commission can kind of grab onto and, and run with. So um, we had elections in the January meeting. Uh, John McCann is still going to be chairperson. I'll be vice chair, and Tim Nath is going to be secretary. Right. Anything else to add? Well, the comment I like to make on the comprehensive plan: it's 13 year old, and when we review up to two pages, actually, just for the record. Council, this council, the previous council, the previous council in 13, they've done a lot on the comprehensive plan. I was surprised myself at many things. The government of Brazil from 13 years ago up to today, how much they've done on the comprehensive plan. We should be proud, actually. We've done so much. And the lawyers say, how much? A lot of things we did. <laughs> I even shared that with the lawyers. You don't think, but so much was done in 13. 13 years, that I'm very proud of this government sure. and the government's going for us. Perfect. All right, thanks, Dale. Uh, our manager. Um, I provide my written report if anyone has any questions. And I uh, just want to let everyone know that the uh, fire department and the uh, borough will be hosting the East Area County Churches Park on Saturday, March 31st, starting at 11 a.m. Thank you. Um, I know somebody's from the libraries here. Does he yes. have anything? He was. Yeah. If you, if you're not on the agenda, but you have something, I'll, I'll, 
Yeah, um, good evening. I'm Ben Hornbeck. I'm the library director, for those of you that don't know. Um, I just wanted to share, we recently finished our annual reporting. I'm going to provide a more formal report, but for 2017, total digital and electronic, we circulated 93,189 items, which is an 8.5% increase from 2016. Um, we also, our total program attendance was 11,400, which was also an 8.5% increase. Um, the library is also now circulating mobile hotspots, so for anyone who does not have internet at home or if you're traveling, you can stop in and borrow one for a week and take it with you, and then you'll have Wi-Fi the whole time you're gone. Um, the Friends in the Library are having their spring used book sale. It starts Thursday evening, April 5th, for members. It's all day April 6th and 7th, and then there's a bag sale on Sunday, April 8th. And also, um, we are offering a rent rebate workshop on Monday, April 9th from 10 to noon. So for anyone who's interested, who needs assistance completing those, you're welcome to come to the library. Just a correction, it's property tax rebate and rent rebate. It's both combined yes. for 1000 for those who are eligible. Not just people who rent. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Old business. New business. Only once, twice, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second.